Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. So my microphone just broke so you have to deal with the actual camera audio this time. So I'm sorry for that, I'm trying to get new microphones soon. For a few weeks those minus 112 memes are annoying me and also this one's pissing me off pretty badly. Because number 5 stated that the sum of all natural numbers is indeed minus 112. And here's a little problem. In my opinion, those aren't the natural numbers. Or maybe there's just a problem with the equal sign or adding things up in general. So I'm going to explain to you why I think those aren't the natural numbers. I don't want to go too deep into the mathematics. I'm not an expert on mathematics, so I just can say the things that I know about. Okay, so let's take a look at the natural numbers and we are going to say that we are going to include zero into the natural numbers. <laughs> and we are going to say that we are going to include the zero into the natural numbers to make at least a monoid out of the natural numbers. <laughs> okay, so the natural numbers, we are going to define them that way. So the natural numbers including zero are just 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay, up until infinity. And certain rules apply to natural numbers. For example, there are two elements, a plus b, and we can make them equal to b plus a. So that means they commute, they are abelian. Okay, those elements are abelian. And also we can say, well, that a plus b but in parentheses plus c equal to a plus parentheses b plus c. So we can place parentheses wherever we want and it won't change anything. So we can do this. And also, since we are including the zero into natural numbers, that's the additive identity. So we can say that a plus the identity is equal to a plus zero and this is just equal to a. And here's a little observation. We could also say that a plus zero is equal to a, but since adding a zero doesn't change anything, we could add a second zero, so that's adding a zero on both sides and that would still give us a. So you could add a million zeros and it won't change anything regarding the value of this number, for example, two. If you add two plus zero, then that's just two. Okay, and we can expand this idea and we can then uh, go into the whole numbers. So, the whole numbers, they are from minus infinity to, for example, minus 1 and then 0 and then 1 and then up to positive infinity. And there's one more thing we can do now. We can say that a minus b can equal to the additive identity, zero. So that means there's a natural inverse to every element. So that's the additive inverse to a. You can also call it a to the minus one power. It doesn't matter. Okay, and now we are going to take a look at this minus 112 thing. Okay, so they say that minus 112 equals to one plus two plus three plus dot dot dot. And I think people are com confusing this plus right here, this adding things up with the plus of this natural numbers or this whole numbers right here because those aren't equal. So that means adding something isn't always equal to adding something or maybe there's already a problem with this equal sign right here. So maybe we should call it instead those two triangles and we are not going to call this plus right here a plus uh, that's more of a composition of elements of this whole thing. So let's just say that's a composition of some elements. And this right here is just a weird little coincidence. So those are just sneaky little variables in disguise. So they aren't actually the real numbers, uh, the, the natural numbers. So they are just some elements of another structure. And they just look like natural numbers and the sweet coincidence leads to minus 112 somehow. So let me show you that those rules don't apply to infinitely many things. Here's the point. That's adding infinitely many things up. But 
those rules only apply to finitely many things. So, listen and repeat. Finite does not imply infinite. But in some cases, infinite can imply finite. So rules that apply to infinitely many things can apply to finitely many things. So that's something that can hold, but most of the time this just doesn't hold. So you can say just because it holds for finitely many things, it does hold for infinitely many things. So let's take a look at, for example, this series right here. Let's call it C for confusing. <laughs> so that's 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus dot dot dot. And this goes on to infinity. And with our rules right here, this won't go to anywhere. So this won't converge, this will diverge, just like this right here. So just adding up the natural numbers would give you plus infinity. It won't go anywhere unless you're doing, for example, revolution summation or any other way of summing things up. That's a whole new field of mathematics and that's something quite different. You're not working with natural numbers there. You are taking different elements and you are going to apply some value to this um, infinite series. So that's a completely different thing than that my pens fell down. Okay, so let's take a look at here and let's just say we are going to apply some of those rules to this series right here. So we could say, for example, hmm, well, this right here is just, we can factor out a minus 1 for example, and then that's minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus dot dot dot. Okay, but here's a little observation, well, this is just C. So what we end up with, with this little conclusion, so we can also factor out a minus 1 on here, because minus b is just equal to minus 1 times b. So we can do this. That's possible in the, uh, whole, uh, in the whole numbers, right? So what we can conclude here is that c is equal to 1 minus c. But here's a little problem. Um, we can now add a c on both sides. That means that 2c is equal to 1. And now, for example, let's say we are going to add a 0 to this side. So that's 0 right here. And maybe we could add another 0. And maybe we could add infinitely many zeros at this point. Because it doesn't matter. We can apply those rules. Those are just the whole numbers, for example. Okay, but what is a zero? Well, that's just one and then minus one plus one. So minus one plus one is just a zero. And then we can add another zero. So that's minus one plus one. And then we can repeat this process. But as you might notice, this is just C. And now here's the contradiction. That means that 2C is equal to C. And well, <laughs> that's not okay because we can cancel out the C right here. And that would mean that 2 is equal to 1. But that's the contradiction. So that doesn't hold. And that's, for example, one counterexample why you can't apply those rules to this infinite series. And here's another one we can do with this right here. So let's take another look at this one. Okay, so that's 1 plus 1 minus 1. And so on. So what else could we do with that? Hmm. Maybe we could say those are a value and we could change the order of those things. So we are applying this rule right here to this infinite series. So this is 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and so on. And now you see, well, this is just confusing. This is just C. And what we end up with is that C is equal to 1 plus C. And now we can subtract C on both sides. So that would yield that 0 is equal to 1. And that's also a contradiction. So you see, most of those rules don't apply to this kind of summation. But like I said before, there's a different field of mathematics where you can do this, where you apply some uh, meaningful value to those series. We could work with this example once again and apply a value to it. Okay. I just want to state a point here, so <laughs> it's just a bit talking, a bit of simple maths. Okay, we can say, well, 
Once again, as before, this is 1 minus factoring the minus 1 out. So 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, dot dot dot. And then, you know, just as before, this is 1 minus c. And then we can bring the c to the other side. And that would mean that 2c is equal to 1. And now we can divide both sides by 2. And that would mean that c is equal to 1 half. And in some field of mathematics, that's the limiting value for this infinite sum. So, so we can do this to apply a meaningful value to the series. But I just want to state with this video that most of those rules don't apply to this kind of series. And like I said before, listen and repeat, finite doesn't imply infinite. So you can't do this all the time. And number five was just adding up things, different series, and then subtracting a few things and factoring out. That's okay if you're working with a different kind of summation, with a different kind of composition of elements of some structure. But with those natural numbers and whole numbers, this just doesn't work. Those are not the natural numbers right here. Those are just some variables looking like the natural numbers. Well, that's all I wanted to say. It's not really a rage. I just want to make clear that I think those aren't the natural numbers. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you like. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.